Let's face it, no one likes fees and neither should you. And some of those pesky super funds can be a little bit sneaky about where they disclose their fees. So how about we get our Sherlock Holmes on and uncover the mystery surrounding super fund fees. You see, different options available to you within your existing super fund could save you thousands of dollars in, in fees each year. And I'm even gonna show you the fees associated with self-managed super funds. G'day, I'm Chris Trano, the founder of SuperGuy, the place where Australians go to maximize their super and build their own retirement plan. If you don't wanna miss a single one of my videos, make sure you subscribe and turn on the notification bell for all of my latest content. Now this video is gonna be a slightly longer one, but trust me, it's worth it. All right, let's get started. Today we're gonna to go through super fund fees. There are hundreds of superannuation funds out there and they all charge different fees. This video is gonna break down the types of fees that you might be paying to give you a full scope of what's being deducted from your super balance and what you're actually paying for. Uh, some fees are percentage-based fees and some are flat dollar fees. So percentage-based fees are charged as a percentage of your balance. Uh, for example, a 1% fee on a balance of $500,000 would be $5,000 each year as a fee. I'm also going to show you the fees that you would pay if you have your own self-managed superannuation fund. And I feel this is important because many people aren't fully aware of the fees that they pay for having their own SMSF. And many people who are thinking about setting up an SMSF don't have explained to them all of the costs incurred in setting one up as well as the ongoing running costs. So even if you don't have an SMSF, I encourage you to watch until the end because it's likely that you will at some point uh, probably consider whether you should have an SMSF or not, or someone may even try and convince you that you should have an SMSF and at least you'll be somewhat educated on the costs and so forth. But first, let's begin with the main types of fees that you'll encounter in an, in an ordinary like retail or industry super fund, because this is where around 90% of people hold their super. Okay, just to refresh a retail super fund, it's usually a bank related super fund. And this doesn't mean that you're investing your money in a bank or bank investments. It just means that the actual super fund platform itself is owned by the bank you still decide how your money is invested. And the thing I like about these retail superannuation funds is that they have great functionality and access to a very large range of investments such as managed funds, shares, term deposits, and so on. And the other type of super fund I mentioned was industry super funds. These super funds are industry linked super funds. I'm sure you've seen the ads, you know, compare the pair and they do that little hand symbol thing with their hands. Really good marketing. In the past, industry funds usually had very little investment choices. They might have had five or six that you could choose from, but these days some of them offer a lot more and you don't always need to be in the particular industry um, to have that specific industry super fund. So they're open to a lot more people these days. So some of the fees that you might see in an industry or retail fund might be an account keeping fee or, or a member fee. This is basically the minimum fee applied to each member of the super fund. And it's deducted from your super balance on a monthly basis. It's the same for everyone. It might range anywhere from $0 to $200 a year, depending on the fund. And this is a flat dollar fee paid to your super fund provider. The next type of fee you might pay is an asset-based administration fee. And I've seen a lot more of these pop up lately. This is basically an additional administration fee. And because it's percentage based, you'll basically pay more in dollar terms for having a higher balance. So I know that seems unfair, but this is the way of life in super. A lot of fees are percentage based and really most types of funds management, to be honest, is percentage based. So the asset based administration fee is usually around 0.1 to 0.2% and is deducted from your super balance on a monthly basis and is paid to your super fund provider. Our next fee is an investment management fee. This can be referred to sometimes as a management expense ratio, or MER for short, or an indirect cost ratio, ICR. So an MER is the fee the manager of a managed fund or an investment option that you choose to invest in charges for managing any amount that you've invested in that investment option. An ICR, it's basically 
an MER plus all of the costs that the manager incurs in managing the managed fund, such as expenses, transaction costs, and, and all of that. So the MER is their actual fee, whereas the ICR is their actual fee plus all of the expenses they incur. Uh, an MER ICR can range anywhere from say 0% all the way up to 3%. Um, unlike the account keeping fees and the member fees that we just went through, this fee is not deducted from your account balance. So this fee is taken out of the pool of money that the fund manager manages. So indirectly you're paying the fee because it is effectively deducted from the amount that you've invested but you can't see this coming out of your super balance or it's not gonna be on the list of transactions in your super account. Does that make sense? For example, let's say you invested, I don't know, $100,000 in, in an investment option or a managed fund within super and the fund manager fee was, let's say 1.5%. So you got $100,000, 1.5% fee. You would be paying the fund manager $1,500 per annum but you don't actually see this fee amount because you and everyone else who chose that investment option invest their money with the fund manager and he or she takes their fee from that pool of money each month. So the idea is that the fund manager will earn you a higher return than the 1.5% fee, hopefully much higher, and everyone wins, but it's not always the case. And also don't be fooled into thinking that the higher the fee, the better investment, because that's there's no evidence to suggest this. In fact, let's just divert here for a minute. Here's a report that I wanna show you conducted by CanStar showing the correlation between fees and investment returns on a $50,000 investment into a multi-sector growth fund, which is basically, or funds, so this is basically like the growth option that you might see in your super fund. Uh, CanStar has taken a bunch of growth funds and compared them based on their returns over a five year period and the fees that they charged over that five year period. So you can see along the bottom axis, the, the total fees paid over five years. And on the side axis is the total return received over that same five years. So for example, let's take a look at that blue, blue dot over to the far right. Now this dot represents a managed investment and says that that particular investment charged a total of $1,000 in fees on the $50,000 investment over five years. So if you look down, follow that blue dot from the right all the way down, you can see $1,000. We can also see if you follow that across to the side axis that it made a return of about $4,000. So that's the blue dot on the far right. Now let's look at the blue dot on the far left that shows an investment, another growth fund, a different one, that charged a total of $200 in fees, if we follow that down, over five years, and made a return of $4,500 looking on the side axis. So that's one fifth of the fees, $200 compared to 1,000, for an extra $500 in extra return. So this is one example that proves that the higher your fee you pay does not always equal a higher return. As you might have guessed, an MER or ICR is percentage-based fees, so therefore you pay more in dollar terms if you have a higher balance. Now this fee is not paid to your super fund. This fee, as I mentioned, is paid to the fund manager or, or the investment option or the managed fund that you have chosen to invest in. In some cases, the super fund will also be the manager of the investment option but often the fund manager can be completely external to the super fund. It's just that the managed fund happens to be on the investment menu offered by the super fund. Do you follow? So for example, let's say that you have a BT personal super account uh, and you choose to invest in the Vanguard balanced fund, for example. BT and Vanguard are completely unrelated. So you would pay the member fee or the account keeping fee or administration fee to BT and this is to provide you with a compliant super fund that abides by all of the superannuation rules, as well as all of the functionality of the account, like the online access, uh, you know, making contributions, receiving, paying pension payments, and so on. Whereas Vanguard in this example would be paid the MER for investing your money for you. Does that make sense? Hopefully. It's important not to confuse the investment manager fees also with advice fees. 
you see, you may notice advice or advisor fees being deducted from your super account, but this is not investment management fees. These are not MERs, these are not ICRs, these are advice fees. So advisor fees are paid to a financial planner who again is usually completely external to a super fund and external to the fund manager or the managed fund. A financial planner is a professional who might provide you with recommendations about the, you know, the level of contributions you should be making, uh, how you should be investing your super to reach your retirement goals, uh, whether or not you should hold insurances within your super account and so on. Advisor fees can be either percentage based uh, fees, flat dollar fees, sometimes a combination of the two, depending on your agreement with your financial planner and then they're deducted from your super account and paid to the financial advisor. If you don't have a financial planner, then there should not be any advice fees being deducted from your account. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking that's a lot of fingers in your pie, right? And I get it, but think about it this way. Let's go through one by one. The member and account keeping fees paid to your super fund for a compliant super account, which gives you tax concessions. These tax concessions should usually outweigh the costs of the account keeping fees, so you're still ahead. And besides, if you're an employee, you have to have a super account for a year employer to pay superannuation guarantee payments into, so there's, no really, there's not really a choice there. You need to have a super account and you need to pay member fees. The next finger in the pie is the investment management fee, which is the fee for managing your super balance by a professional so that you don't have to. The long-term returns from the investment or the managed fund or investment option should usually be higher than the fees. So you're still ahead. And the last finger in the pie is the financial advisor fees, which you have chosen to pay to get help with progress towards your retirement goals, which let's face it, this is what superannuation retirement planning is all about. You want to attain your retirement goals. My definition of a financial planner's role is to significantly improve the probability of you reaching your retirement goals compared to if you were to try and do it alone without their help. A financial planner should be helping you retire with confidence of achieving your specific retirement goals. And this is achieved through various tax effective strategies, um, optimizing contribution plans, uh, suitable investment decisions, and ultimately retirement income strategies designed to give you your desired retirement income for the rest of your life. So you can really see how everyone and everything works together to keep you on track. That being said, you really want to make sure that you've got a super fund that meets your specific needs for the right price. Likewise, when you're choosing how to invest your super balance, you want to make sure the investment option you choose sits within your comfort level of risk and is expected to produce returns in line with what you're expecting without losing too much in fees. And finally, if you do have a financial planner, it's got to be someone you feel comfortable with. Make sure you've got an advisor who is happy to answer your questions. Someone who's, you know, not dismissive, someone who encourages you not to be afraid to ask dumb questions. Uh, and you know, someone who just feels right. By now, your gut instincts will tell you whether you've got the right person. If you're not 100% sure that your financial plan is right for you, I would say get rid of them. It's a very, very important relationship because your retirement depends on it and there are too many good advisors out there to settle for the average one, so move on. All right, let's, uh, let's keep going. I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of SMSF fees in one sec, but I just thought that we could scan through the PDS of Australian Super. Uh, PDS is a product disclosure statement, so, Australian Super is one of the many industry super funds, just so you can see an example of the fees that we've, we've discussed and, and how it's disclosed in their documentation. The reason I chose Australian Super, uh, or the reason I choose Australian Super for a lot of my examples is for no other reason than most people have heard of it. Uh, it's a commonly used super fund, so don't read too much into it. I don't think it's the best super fund. I don't think it's the worst super fund. I'm not recommending it. I'm not suggesting it. It's just good to use as an example. Um, the PDS, Product Disclosure Statement, will tell you everything you need to know about a super fund and every super fund must have one. So your super fund will have one, uh, a super fund that you're considering will have one. That's how you can compare uh, which one's best suited for you. Okay, so here we've got the Australian Super Product Disclosure Statement. 
And if we have a look here, section six covers off on the fees and costs. So we'll scroll down to fees and costs in section six. And you'll see here that what they've done is given an, an, an example of the costs associated with a balanced option, which is the default option associated with uh, the Australian super account. So if you don't choose how you want your money invested, they'll automatically put it into the balanced option for you. So we can see here the investment fee or the MER that we spoke about, uh, or the ICR, is 0.6% on that option. So that's deducted from the managed fund or the, the investment option pool of assets. We then have an administration fee, which is a flat dollar fee of $2.25 per week. Um, and on top of that, there's an asset-based administration fee, which I mentioned was popping up more and more with super funds lately. So this one is 0.04% per annum. So you've got your administration fee, member fee, account keeping fee, whatever you wanna call it at $2.25 per week, plus an asset-based administration fee, plus your investment fee. Uh, they also go through and discuss other fees such as a buy sell spread which is really just a transaction cost for when you you know enter into an investment uh, an investment option in this case it's nil if you want to switch between investment options so if you want to go from balance to growth or balance to conservative or the cash option or whatever uh, they don't charge for that either they do offer over the phone advice uh, which can range in in price and you'll notice here it says other fees and costs. So remember how we said balance is the default option. So if we go to additional explanation of fees and costs, if we go to this address, uh, this URL, which I've downloaded here, you'll see fees and costs additional information. So it goes through again, the, the, chart, the table we've just looked at, investment fee based on a balanced option. But what it also does is shows you the cost on the second page of each of the other options that you can invest in. So we've got, you can invest in a high growth, which is an aggressive portfolio, uh, a balanced, which we've seen, socially aware, index diversified, uh, conservative balance stable, but then you've also got your, your mix options. So if you just want to invest in Australian shares or just want to invest in international shares or property or fixed interest or cash, here's the total fees. So this 0.6%, is the example shown on the previous page. And this also goes into what I was talking about before. You can see that the actual investment management fee of the balanced option is only 0.42%, uh, which we might say is the MER, but then it includes performance related fees uh, and transactional and operational costs, giving a total of 0.6%, which you could then say is the ICR, maybe the indirect cost ratio, which is everything the MER plus the operational costs. Uh, and it's got that for each of the investment options. So you can you can now have a look at, uh, go onto your, the website of your super fund, have a look at the product disclosure statement. It'll be on the website somewhere. It shouldn't be too hard to find. Or even Google your super fund name followed by PDS and you should be able to find it. Make sure it's the latest one. So it's probably best going to the website. And you can use that to compare the fees in say this one, just as an example, uh, or download another super fund that you might be considering or you've heard of, and you can compare the fees that way. So those types of fees within Australian super are pretty standard across most retail and industry super funds. You know, there might be a couple of differences, the fees might go by different names, they might be broken up in different ways, but essentially they're all quite similar. All right, SMSFs. This is really just, I'm gonna give a broad brush stroke here just so you can see what fees uh, are involved if you do run your own SMSF. Uh, a specific SMSF video will go into how SMSFs work in detail and so on. So this is really just a broad stroke. Um, so with an SMSF, instead of paying a super fund such as a retail or industry fund to be the trustee of your super fund and maintain a compliant super fund for you, you, are now the trustee of your own super and you are responsible for making sure your super is compliant. And when I use the term compliant, it means that if your super fund is not compliant, you get none of the tax concessions associated with super, so it's really no longer a super fund. Plus, 
you might have your total balance taxed at the highest marginal tax rate as a penalty for being non-compliant. So it goes without saying that it's very important to keep a compliant super fund. Anyway, back to SMSF fees. All right, depending on who you go through, setting up an SMSF will generally cost around two to $3,000 just to get going. Uh, this will give you a trustee, sole purpose corporate trustee, cover ASIC fees and all that jazz. If you're thinking about buying a property within your SMSF and setting up a maybe a borrowing arrangement, then these costs will be, probably be higher again. Uh, now, because you are the trustee of your super fund, you are responsible for all the tax returns, financial statements and everything um, each year. Obviously, you pay an accountant for this and you also pay an auditor to complete an audit report each year confirming that your fund is compliant. Uh, depending on your investments and your accountant, uh, accounting, accounting fees will be around $3,000 a year, give or take. Uh, there'll be audit fees of around four to $500. And on top of that, there's general levies and charges and so on that might be about another $500 or so. So before you even invest any money in an SMSF, or get any advice from professionals such as a financial planner, you're already up for around $4,000 each year in fees. You don't pay any member fees or account keeping fees because you are the super fund. Uh, but again, if you're buying a property within super, you have a, or have a borrowing arrangement, then your fees are probably gonna be even higher than this each year. Personally, I think way too many people love the idea of buying property with their super um, and they don't truly really understand all of the costs, the paperwork, legal responsibilities and so forth in doing so. If you're going to do this, it needs to be really well thought out. Discuss it with as many people as possible. Ideally, you don't want to be discussing it with people. Well, you do. You want to get advice of certain people, but uh, don't restrict your advice from people who have a conflict of interest in your decision, such as real estate agents or your accountant, because both of these people will benefit greatly from you spending money buying a property and setting up a self-managed super fund. So ask around for other people's advice too. Uh, back to fees. Sorry, I tend to get carried away. I see too many people lose lots of their super by setting up an SMSF and buying property when it really wasn't in their best interest to do so and they hadn't run all the numbers to see how beneficial it actually was. So back to fees. Depending on how you invest your super within a super fund, you may still be paying investment fees. If you, for example, you know, choose to invest in managed funds, uh, if you invest in shares and you wanna manage it yourself, you're not gonna pay any fees apart from brokerage but if you have a stockbroker, you may need to pay them fees. Uh, same as if you have a financial planner. So you really need to weigh up the benefits of an SMSF with the costs associated in running one. As I mentioned, there's also a lot of extra paperwork that you need to keep on top of each year. So often a retail super fund will suit most people, but um, you know, some people like having greater control that a super fund, a self-managed super fund can provide. I don't want to get too tied up in an SMSF in this video. This is really just about understanding the types of fees that you pay within super. And hopefully I've covered that for you. Not sure. I've done a bit of rambling. I'm pretty sure I covered most of it. Hit me up with any questions you might have if I have missed something. You see, it's elementary, my dear Watson. Are you paying too much in super fund fees? Let me know in the comments below. And if you're finding my superannuation and retirement tips helpful, Sign up for my newsletter at superguide.com.au and get even more valuable content. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.